In this video, I'm going to give a, an example, a hypothetical, fictional kind of situation on a, per, a person who has narcissistic and histrionic types of behaviors. It's not a diagnose um, of the disorder, but they have behaviors. Not all of them do the same. I've done a, I'm doing a series of different kind of behaviors I've seen, kind of like a um, combination and making a fictional story about it. Okay. In this one, I'm going to um, put it on a ranch, um, a ranch in Texas. Say it's a really huge ranch. And when I say you, I don't mean you, of course. It's just the way I'm telling the story. And um, it's a huge ranch owned by an elders of a family that go back generations even before the elders. They say they're in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And they own this huge ranch that has cabins and cottages for people to rent. And, um, you know, of course, they do this, the whole thing that a ranch does and sells, you know, their cattle and horses and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. They have a huge family. Of, and like I said, it goes back generations. And the, the family, mainly it's the family that runs this huge ranch. And um, it's got a lot of, say, you're one of them. Like I said, it's not you, but the way I'm telling the story. With cousins and great aunts and uncles and aunts and uncles and so on and so forth. It's just huge family. And anybody who's been born into this family, they grew up doing this. They grew up um, doing the, what I'm about to talk about. Now, now, I've done a little bit of the background. So, let's say that you are a member of this family and you have... Um, You've done it for since you were a child. Some people, of course, you know, in the family, they go on their own ways, and everybody, not everybody works on the farm. They have their own homes and children else that go elsewhere. But a majority of them do uh, help out at some point during the year at this ranch. Now, such as this. Now, the, the, the family has figured this out over generations, many generations going way back, that all they need to do to, is to have the owners, they live there in the big house, that's what they call it, the big house. That's probably not a good PC term for it. And part of that house has a wing that they also rent out to people, just strangers, you know, people who are wanting like a bed and breakfast. But they also have, like I said, cabbages, cabbage, <laughs> cabbages, cabins and cottages on the property. Like I said, you know, this is a business too. They. They let strangers who want to have the Texas style ranch, you know, Texas ranch style living experience. They they rent these cabins and you know they have kitchenettes and they're you know separate to where nobody's right on top of one another. You know, it's a big huge ranch, and, and they they do this all year round except for two weeks out of the year, and those two weeks is when they've worked this out. Like I said, over years when the owners and the people who the family members who work there and the family members who own it, they all, they're all generally family, they get their vacation, you know, and, and other employees, they, staff, they get their vacation on those, during those two weeks. And during those two weeks, other family members, they get to stay, stay there in the cabins or in the house and um, they don't have to pay anything for it, like, you know, strangers do, um, guests do. So they do that. And they work the, wow, this is the noise. They work the ranch while they're there. And not only that, but family members, like, say they lose their job and they're really hard up, they can, they can come back to the ranch and work. You know, and like I said, most of the people working on the ranch, they're family. And so it really works out for the family. They've really figured it out over all those many generations on how to work it and how to do it. And like I said, not all of them, but yeah. So in that way, also, whenever they take over those two weeks out of the year, they also are responsible, for, you know, they, they don't have to pay for the rent, but, you know, the space. But um, they, they're responsible for cooking their own meals, having their own groceries, and you know, they're on vacation, even though the cabins have their own kitchenette, they're basically expected to do, to do the work um, 
for the hands, you know, the people who are working and they're going to be cooking at least one meal every day, you know, they take turns who cooks what meal, you know, as a group for everybody. So it's all worked out. Now I'm, now I'm going into more detail on this one because I'm going to use this one as the first one of uh, many to come, maybe, we'll see. But now to get to this one, and I have a series, I have them numbered, this will not be first because I've done different kinds of scenes in different videos, but in this one, I'm going to get to the story now. So one year, you are, um, you and your family decide to go to the ranch on your vacation, but you, you only go for a few days. And one of the family members that, that is the one who schedules the, um, you know, appoint, the bookings for anybody, stranger or family, they also do it for the family. Okay. And that's what some do. They only go for a few days during those two weeks, and then, the, then another set comes in. And in, in yours situation, you, were, you and your family were there for a few days, and then one of your okay sorry about that one of your uh, cousins well she had passed away years before and her her husband you know that she left behind and her children um, they come every year too usually every year for vacation and well he was you were going you and your family were leaving he was coming in with him with his girl you know his children and his new girlfriend and so you only met her briefly, very briefly. And now him, you've known, he's, you know, part of the family, but you don't know him all that great. He's a cousin, you know, he's a late cousin's husband. You don't know him all that much. But still, you know, the children are um, part of the family too. So he ha he's there with them also. And well, you meet this woman, this his girlfriend, and you think, you know, you, you don't like to pass judgments real quickly, but everybody, you know, I think many people do it it's like a survival thing. You sum up a person, even if you might be wrong, but you sum them up really quickly. You know, I think it's a survival thing, like I said. And when you, when you see her, you think, well, for one thing, she's kind of oddly dressed for a ranch, and it, it seems a bit too much. And her hair is too much, her makeup, and... What little, you know, introduction and all that you had with her, you thought she was kind of loud. And she just seemed kind of inappropriate. You know, her whole behavior, her look, her everything. But, you know, to each their own, that's his new girlfriend and so forth. And, you know, you think about the children and all that. But still, something just didn't seem right about her. So, by the next year, you, um, well, the next year, you, you you work it out to where you're going to be there with you and your family for a week, a whole week. And, you know, like I said, you kind of help operating the um, the ranch and the house and the cook, you know, cooking the meals, buying the groceries, these kinds of things for during that week for the whole ranch. And uh, little did you know, but so did that late cousin's husband and his family and that girlfriend. And, and this time, you and your family, y'all, you all decided to stay in the house, in the the wing that's set up for, you know, for uh, customers, to, people for the bed and breakfast. So you want to stay in one of those, um, those little suites. And um, the thing about it is, is so did she. She just she, they had stayed in a cabin, one of the cabins, the time that you know that you were exchanging, you know, you were walking out. This time she said, what you heard, what you. You know, her through the grapevine. Is that she had said no? She wants to be in, the, you know, in the big house. Like I said, I don't think that's the right way to say it, but, you know, but you know, the, she wanted to be in the house where all the activity is going on. Well, you start to realize what that's all about. Why she needs to be around so many people. You and your family, it was just more convenient for you this time. You're going to be there longer, and you know, you go, you go ahead and do that. It wasn't anything about wanting attention, but for her, as it turns out, she liked having a lot of attention, and she was getting it from certain family members. Or I should should say that she wanted to get it from a lot of other people. Because it starts off, you know, the, the two weeks, it's one of the two weeks, and you see that she's there. Well, some of the things you learned during, like, the first day, 
about her is that she didn't think that she needed to help out in any way that she was a guest even though there, she's you know not paying for the room either she's with your late cousin's husband and their children but she didn't feel like she should have to do anything you know this was her vacation and she wasn't paying for it you know, there was nothing she was paying for but she deserved to have time off and she didn't eat she shouldn't have to cook or do stuff like that she shouldn't have to go and buy groceries or go with him to buy groceries she thinks he shouldn't have to buy groceries she had that kind of attitude that it sends a high sense of entitlement and that people are basically supposed to wait on her you know family members that this is her vacation and they should wait on her too <laughs> you see yeah she had that kind of an audacity and you wondered about your cousins you know your late cousin's husband does he understand it but he he obviously obviously did because he would help out on the ranch and in the kitchen do different things but he did it was like as though he was um somehow just didn't see that she had to do it either and you started to see that she had really reeled him in you know to where he thought the same way that she thought about things even though he really didn't not for himself you got that so where was i in the story um so this this woman let's call her say that she calls herself sissy and um he let's call him mark these are of course it's a fictional story so they're fictional names well that's your cousin's your late cousin's husband so she sissy really believes that she's on vacation and you know she shouldn't have to do anything well, one, you know, it's not your circus, not your monkeys. That's how you feel about it. Well, one, at one time, you're in the kitchen and you, somebody calls, like, you know, the, uh, what would you call them, the guests, the, you know, what they usually do is to call that number to order their meals. Well, you pick up the phone, you know, nobody should be doing that because this is just for family. And you answer it and it's her, Sissy. And Sissy tries to make an order. <laughs> and you say, you know, for food to be delivered to her door. And you recognize who she is by her loud, kind of obnoxious voice. And you say, dinner is on the table. You say it very calmly. Just a matter of fact, dinner is on the table. And she says, well, I am not family. I should be served. You need to have my meal at my door. And you, and you just, you still thinking in your mind, not my circus, not my monkeys. And you say dinner is on the table and you hang up the phone. Okay, you don't add any anger or any kind of uh, attitude to it. You just calmly say, matter of fact, dinner is on the table. Hopefully the driving sounds aren't too loud, but let's go on with this. So the next thing you know, you hear Mark's phone ring. He answers it. And then you see him getting a plate together and leave the room. So what is he doing? He's delivering a meal to her. Okay, again, not your circus, not your monkeys. But you have known, that person is driving on the wrong side of the road. But you have known this type of person. Okay, this is getting dangerous. That person is driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's not good. Yeah, because this is a road that goes both ways. You're seeing it in action. So, anyway, let's hope there's no accident down here. Why would be somebody be driving on the wrong side of the road is beyond me. But, anyway, somebody with a, somebody who's not, nope, nope, here it comes. Might be an accident here. <laughs> Do they realize what they're doing? Oh my goodness. Just a little bit afraid to be behind that person, but anyway, and I'm not too close. Um, so where was I in the story? That like I, I got definitely got distracted with that. So you see this type of person, you've known this type of person your whole life. You know the kind of behaviors you know that you've seen, and you just don't really want to have anything to do. But unfortunately, you have a whole week there with your family. 
Now, in some of the things, to move on a little bit, some of the things a family does, and this kind of thing is, you know, in the if you're in the house, or even if you're not, pe people come together in the uh, evening, watch some TV together, watch, um, play some cards, you know, things that families do. Um, you know, it's not so much with people being on their on their cell phones. You know, it's out there in the country. It's not great service. So. And you know, also things on besides work on the you know, on the property, they go for horseback rides and stuff like this. You know, as groups. Now, okay, to move to another little scene here. Your your family, they're not much into gossiping. They're they're pretty well, you know, they're they're pretty normal people. They're not much into gossiping and stuff like that. But one of your sisters is there, and this. Um, Sissy tried it on her too. She was walking down the hall and she said they told your sister to uh, get her some sheets. And her, your sister is a little more, you know, a little more vocal and she says you go get them yourself. And she just walks off. Well, your sister tells you about this and you, you tell her about what happened. And you know, you're not really into the gossiping, but it's becoming a problem. You know, because this sissy is becoming demanding of family members, okay? And she is in no way related to the family. She's not asking, you know, like, could you help me out here? No, she's demanding. And you've already heard, you know, you've already, you already know she thinks she's on vacation. And that she, she deserves to be served. Well, you and your sister, you know, she, your sister knows that cousin, Mark, a little bit more, and you start talking about it, and you decide you're going to have a discussion with Mark about what's going on, and uh, let him know that this is family, and, you know, even though he's not blood-related, his kids are, and, you know, that still something needs to be done about this. This is not how it works, and you're very calm people, calm, cool, and collected. Overall, the family is. But before that happens, that night, that evening, you know, everybody sits down to play some cards and stuff and such. Well, you wind up, you and your husband, wind up with Mark and Sissy playing cards. And, and then, you know, there's, there's other people in the room playing cards. You know, you're playing where it's uh, partners. You have to play partners, say spades or something. And other people hear this too. How... Um, loud sissy becomes sissy becomes extremely loud in the way she talks the way she uh, laughs and the way she looks she's very her clothing is very provocative and it's just not the family kind of scene that somebody should be doing you know it's not it's not family it's not any kind of dress that anybody really would want to see anybody in some people might, but not there. That's not the feeling, the feel, you know, feeling that it, it should be all, all around. But she's just loud, obnoxious, and so on and so forth. Dress, appearance, all of it. And your sister's also in the room, and you give one another that look. And, but what ha starts happening is something totally different. Okay. But Sissy starts bad-mouthing, you know, find some lame excuse you're sitting right there at the table uh, you know playing cards and she makes up some lame excuse about how he's playing cards and he's doing it on purpose and all this and he's just sitting there like what and she starts bad mouthing him and you know this type you have seen this type before and you know what she's doing is trying to do a smear campaign on him and in your mind, you know, and later on you find out it's pretty much true, is that she is trying to isolate him. She doesn't want him to be around such a great family. You know, even though he is, like I said, not blood related, still, she does not like that at all. So, basically, you know, she can't, she can't control, control him. When there are other people who are, she probably picks it up, they're watching his back. And they're not going to allow this, like you and your sister are going to have a discussion with him about it. Calm, cool, collected, and let him know her behavior is not appropriate for a family gathering there.
okay? And that's how they're going to put it, as a, at a family gathering, which is going to be tough. So she continues this smear campaign, and at some point, your sister, the one who's a bit louder than the rest, she, uh, she looks at Mark, and she says, Mark, you and I are going to have a discussion right now. And you follow along with her, and you go into another room, and the two of you sit down with Mark and explain what's going on and why they, you know, that you don't appreciate it and it's not appropriate and so on and so forth. Now, you do, and Mark gets a little bit upset, but at the same time, he, it's like he's a little confused. He, he says, I'm just so shocked that she did that and the way she was behaving. And, you know, but then he, he would try, like, in some ways to step, take up for her and he even acted at one point like he was a little offended that that he would never come back and you know they you and your sister said think about the children you know they ha have an investment in this too because everybody that's in the family blood relations they do they have a um you know they stand to you know inherit some of the property as time you know goes by and as part of it has always been if they don't if, the, if a family member doesn't contribute to this, um, they don't inherit. Pl plain and simple. That's how it has always been. And that's how it always will be. They just d will not inherit anything. So, you know, they told Mark to think about the children and think, of, you know, think it through. And everybody's very calm. And, you know, but Mark is, is like, confused. He doesn't know um, which way to go on this. You know, it's his girlfriend and, it, he, you know, you're wondering if he's planning on getting married to her. She does live with him. And, you know, you really don't know what to think. And then the next morning, you know, your sister, again, walks past that room. But this time, she doesn't mean to be eavesdropping, but she hears Sissy extremely loud and yelling at Mark that she is on vacation, the whole, the whole thing, and he should be understanding of that she shouldn't have to help out and do anything that he shouldn't either and how dare they treat him that way he's not family either and it's just their, their kids can go and do his kids you know can go and do some some of this and they shouldn't have to and so your sister stops because you know she's she's kind of like that she's going to eavesdrop at that point and she what she hears just floors her how the they should be treated as and you know, the family members should be treated as her servants and you can hear barely hear mark answering saying you need to think this through you need to think about what you're saying and the kids are there okay the kids are hearing this and yeah you know your sister's telling you all of what she's heard after after the fact of course you know what she heard about this and again you know you're you're still in the mode of it's not my circus not my monkeys but except for the fact that the family, what they're doing to the family, and you did have a discussion with him saying this is inappropriate for a family gathering and people, and the family members who are here are not here to hear this kind of thing and to deal with this kind of thing with her, the way Sissy acts. And that's when you, it becomes your circus in a way, okay? okay. And one of the things you do know, you, you yourself, you know, your sister's a bit different, but um, than you. And you know that Sissy's probably enjoying this. She's wanting to, to be the center of attention, no matter whether it's good attention or bad attention. She's getting what she wants. She's getting her feel of being that center of everybody's attention and doing, you know, like I said, doesn't matter, good or bad, she's getting that attention. So you're stuck there because you, you, you're stumped. You know, this isn't appropriate for the children. It's not appropriate, you know, that for the family. And, but you know she's enjoying it. So what would you do? As it turns out, you don't have to do anything because you know your sister. <laughs> yeah. She decides she's going to take it in her own hands and she has a discussion with Mark. She goes back and she tells Mark, this is not acceptable. If you want to leave your children here, we'll watch your children. You can come pick them up later on. You know, he doesn't live all that far from there. And, but, uh, Sissy has to leave, period. This is inappropriate for the family. They're not having it. We're not there for that, along that line. So Mark gets angry and he leaves. 
okay, he leaves with all of them, including the kids. So, okay, now you yourself, how would you have handled it? I'm going to leave this one off, this, this part of it, the story right here. But how would you have then handled it yourself? If you had to do it yourself, what would you have done? Anyway, stay tuned for more eventually. Talk to you on another video.